I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a question on the p-value. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orvo Man products and the author of the Death Destroyer book. I'm here with Professor Blois, who was actually my professor in college for mathematics, and he's agreed to do some really good problems with us today on p-value. Professor Blois feels that we need more problems in our math destroyer on p-value. So he wants to do another problem just to bolster up what you guys already are seeing in the math destroyer. So Professor, if you can show us another problem, and then the students would add this on, correct? Into yeah. the new edition of the book. Add this as another extra problem in the math section. Yes. Okay, Professor. Uh, Professor Blois here. The p-value problems, or the p-value has been coming up on recent I issues of the DAT. Let's read this problem together. A drug company claims there is no more than an 8% chance that its new anti-anxiety drug, Nozac, will cause a headache as a side effect. Debbie decides to randomly survey 10 people on Nozac and observes how many suffer headache as a side effect. Based on her results, Debbie calculates the p-value. Discuss the interpretation of each of the p-values that Debbie might calculate on the basis of her survey. Okay, uh, how the p-value is calculated is not of our concern. That involves a whole lesson in probability. But here we have a discussion of the p-value. I'm not going to give you the formal definition, but I'm going to give you an intuitive definition of what the p-value represents. It is the probability that your observed value in the, the survey that you did is a confirmation of the value claimed by a calculated result. Like in this case, the drug company uh, claiming that no more than 8% of their uh, Nozac takers uh, will have a, a side effect of a headache. Okay, you, uh, the p-value is the probability that your survey, that Debbie's survey in this case, is a confirmation of the drug company's claim. And the drug company's claim will be regarded as the null hypothesis that there, there will be no more than 8% of their uh, Nozac takers with a headache. Okay, now, since the p-value is interpreted as the probability that it's a confirmation, the higher the p-value, the better. If we have a p-value of 1, of 100%, well, that means our survey is in complete agreement with that of the drug company's claim. But if the p-value is low, let's say the p-value is, well, let's look at here, 0.24. That doesn't seem so high, 24%. It's still not enough to cause us to uh, sow some doubts about the null hypothesis because there are two levels of significance. Okay, let me write this down. There's a 5% level of significance and a 1% level of si significance. Level of significance. Okay, and a 5% level of significance means if the p-value is 5% or less, we are tempted, we are compelled to reject the null hypothesis with a 5% chance that we did so incorrectly. Okay, there's a more stringent level of a 1%. If the p-value is 1%, that means there's only a lousy 1% that our survey is a confirmation of the null hypothesis. Well, that means we would reject the null hypothesis with only a 1% chance that we were in error. So let's proceed here. If the p-value is 20.24, 24%, no. We're not compelled to reject the null hypothesis. That's still within the, the variation of the population that Debbie finds people whose uh, side effect rate may be a little bit higher than what the drug company is claiming. What about a p-value of 0. 0. 0.055? Well, that's 5.5%. Well, remember, the smaller the p-value, the more compelled you are to reject the null hypothesis. 5.5% is still slightly above 5%. So you would not reject the null hypothesis at the 5% significance level because it's greater than 5%. So you, you accept that null hypothesis. You say, okay, everything's all right. Let's go to a p-value of 0.03 or 3%. Now, 3% lies right in between 5% and 1%, okay? So 3% surpasses the level of stringency of the 5% level of significance. Yes, at, when p-value is 3%, we will certainly reject the null hypothesis at the 5% significance level. But... This is not significant enough for me to reject, it's not compelling enough for me to reject the null hypothesis at the 1% significance level, okay? What if P is 0.009? Okay, well that's 0.9%. 
Well, at 0.9%, we are at a value that's either 1% or less than 1%. And therefore, we are very compelled to reject the null hypothesis at the 1% significance level. So that's the discussion of each one of these p-values. If the p-value is 5% or less, we are compelled to reject the null hypothesis on the 5% significance level. If it's 1% or less, we are compelled to reject the null hypothesis on the 1% significance level. And there we are. Okay, well done. Um, you're taking, Professor Blois has taken something that's not so easy and made it into something that's understandable. Hopefully you all have a good idea what this is, and then you can go back to the man destroyer. But make sure you add this question in. All right, we'll be doing some more in the future. Hope you enjoy this clip. See you in study group. Bye-bye.